Alright, the generous guys and gals over at Asus ROG has blessed my desk once again, this time with the Asus ROG Chakram gaming mouse. I saw videos about this mouse during CES 2020, and I was pretty excited to get a hold of it, because it has a feature that I think will benefit me greatly. So yeah, let's unbox the ROG Chakram and get some first impressions. The ROG Chakram comes in a very sturdy black and red clamshell box. On the back, we can see the mouse in its disassembled state. There are also logos of Asus Aura Sync, Qi Wireless Charging, and Bluetooth. The Chakram is a dual-mode mouse, meaning apart from its wired USB-C state, it can also function through Bluetooth and the wireless 2.4GHz receiver. Plus, it can charge via Qi Wireless Charging. It has a 16,000 dpi sensor, and it supports a 1000 Hz polling rate, whether it's in wired or wireless mode. But enough of the text, let's go straight into the box. Once you open up the top half of the clamshell, you're greeted with the mouse in a plastic mold to protect it from bumps during shipping. Let's put that aside for now. Inside is a wax bag with a carry bag for the mouse inside it. Under that, we get to the accessories. Let's get this extra long USB to USB-C cable out of the way first. Props to Asus ROG for finally transitioning their peripherals to USB-C. First accessory we have is the DIY logo for the Chakram's RGB LED. I'll explain this later. Next, we have a dongle end, so you can plug the Chakram's receiver to the end of the charging and data cable. Lastly, we have a triangular hard case. Inside are some replacement click switches, a pair of tweezers, a replacement head, and a cover for the joystick. Yes, these are weird to find in the gaming mouse box, but trust me, it will all make sense later. Let's go back to the mouse. Opening up the underside of the mold, we get a hefty manual and a little ROG logo that you can stick to things. I like these very much. Then we have the mouse itself. It looks pretty badass. Also kind of weighty though. It's definitely a long boy. Also, I don't know if it's showing up properly in the camera, but the plastic on top isn't opaque. It's actually this translucent smoked plastic. The click feels nice and crisp. Even the scroll wheel feels very sturdy. Once we move on over to the side of the mouse, we can see the feature that I mentioned in the intro. It's this. It's a joystick. It's a pretty interesting feature for me, because it allows for a lot more inputs without making the mouse unwieldy, like a Razer Naga or something. But let's talk about that later. We do get a back and forward button. The sides of the mouse have ridges and is finished in a grippy texture. Very comfortable. On the thumb side, there is a pronounced thumb scoop. I generally don't like thumb scoops. The underside of the mouse reveals the pairing button the Bluetooth to wired to wireless toggle switch, and the DPI switch button. First red flag of the mouse for me. Why is the DPI switch button at the underside of the mouse? Anyway, let's turn it on. Would you look at that? That's some bright RGB. So the translucent plastic parts make some sense now. The removable back panel where the receiver is stored also lights up with the ROG logo. Remember the white piece of plastic we unboxed before? Well, that's for custom logos. You can actually replace the ROG logo here at the back with a logo of your own making, by drawing it on this little plastic piece. Very cool of Asus to include this, but since this is a loner unit, I won't draw a logo on this one. Also, remember the replacement switches and the tweezers? Well, they're for this. The click pads are only held in place by magnets, and you can remove them just by pulling on this little edge here. From there, you will expose the click switches, and you can swap them out for ones of your choosing. The ones pre-installed on the mouse are the light click ones, and the replacement ones in the plastic are heavy ones. I think I'll tackle that in my full review. Anyway, let's plug in the receiver and play a few rounds of Rainbow Six Siege. First impressions, it's very heavy. Way heavier than my daily driver, the Logitech G102, but it is way more comfortable. I feel like it fills my hand in way better than the small G102. 
tracking and grip is excellent. I feel very connected to the mousepad, and I'm not missing my shots that much. There is very little rattle, so I'm very confident in swinging it around. A big red flag though, the mouse is very rear heavy, so you're going to have to adjust your lift a bit if you're coming from a balanced mouse. So how's the joystick? Let's try it out in a pro setting. On Premiere Pro, which is probably my most used program apart from games, the joystick default is as follows. The move forward and backward is a per frame scrub. Move left and right is a per cut scrub. This is amazing. Even at this setting, which is probably not my first choice for it, it can already improve my editing experience. Next, let's try it out on a game. Well, it works like a joystick, except it's harder to operate? I don't know, I'll need to get in some more miles on this for me to get a proper opinion on them for gaming. Overall, it's a good experience, but I do have to stress this and I can't stress this hard enough. It is very heavy, but I would have to use it a bit more to get deeper insights, and all of that will be in my full review. So that's my unboxing of the Asus ROG Chakram Gaming Mouse. Do you have any questions about it? Let me know in the comments. And please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more straight to the point videos like this. My previous video was my customization of my Nike acronym Prestos. Have you seen it yet? Go watch it, it's pretty good. That's it, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!